Our can't is the very first step to God's can. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. This study is entitled, Can You Drink This Cup? Jesus asking a question again to his disciples, imperfect as they were. Thank you, Lord, we have a perfect savior. And he asked them this question so that they could give the answer that is needed in order for him to then give the answer. Well, before we get into that, I wanna thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and pass this video on to someone else. And you can also connect with us online at our website, changeministry.org. You can go to the contact page. We don't do social media, but we got an email address and we love being in touch. In fact, we'd love to come to where you are. So if you wanna get that started, we'd love to come to your church, your school, or your group. Go reach out to us online at this website. Our cannot is the very first step to God's can't. This is a point where Jesus is asking his questions. Again, he knows the answer, but he's trying to bring the answer to the minds of his disciples in order for them to get to the next step. In Mark chapter 10, verse 37, it starts with them, James and John, saying to him, Jesus, grant it to us that we may sit, one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand, in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, ye know not what you ask. Can you drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, we can. And Jesus said unto them, ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of. And with the baptism that I am baptized with all, shall ye be baptized. Jesus said an answer, but it wasn't what they necessarily wanted to hear. He's saying, you're going to drink this cup. In other words, you're going to go through it. But it was really my intent that, that when I asked you this question, that you would see your limits and not perceive or think of yourself as being unlimited. He, he wanted to be the other way around. He wanted them to see their limitations, but to see the unlimited power of God. Because if they were really relying on God's power, they would have said, no, we can't, but through you, we can. And it's really no different than others that he's confronted in the Bible, where some have gotten the idea of the can't before the can, and then others who thought they could, but then found out that they couldn't, but then by the grace of God, they found out that only God could. It's like Luke chapter 1, verses 18 through 20, when Zacharias is told by the angel Gabriel that God's going to do a miracle. You and your senior citizen wife are going to have a son. And not only just have a son, but that son is going to be the preparer of the way for Messiah. And Luke 1, when he hears this, Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man. And my wife, well stricken in years. So Zacharias focuses on himself, much like James and John were in their situation. And so the angel answers and says to Zacharias, I'm Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that those things which shall be performed because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. He calls out Zacharias, not because Zacharias could not have a child. That was already the situation. In fact, that's why God went to this man. That's one of the reasons why he chose Elizabeth and Zacharias, so that it would again show his power, not Zacharias's and Elizabeth's fertility and ability to produce life. Zacharias, instead of looking at God, looked at Zacharias. He looked at himself by making him quiet for the next nine months. He had a chance to think about and hopefully get a mindset like, on the other hand, his cousin Mary had. Mary, fully aware of her can't, but also fully aware of God's can. In Luke 1, it says on the other side of this chapter, then said Mary unto the angel, same angel, giving another message of a miracle that she was going to bear a son and that she was going to have a child, even though she wasn't even married yet. So how shall this be? She asks, seeing I know not a man. She's not asking if God can. She's asking how God will. And so the angel answers and says unto her, well, how this is going to happen is the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And what was her response? Down in verse 38, and Mary said, behold, look, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word, 
and the angel departed from her. Did you see the difference? She said, be it unto me according unto thy word. Mary was fully aware of her can't. She testified to her can't. She says it in her exchange with Gabriel, but she is leaning, she stands on, she rests on God can. And because she got a little bit of an explanation of even what was going to still be a miracle, even though that the recipe was there, like you could look at a cookbook at some recipes and you could follow it line by line and, and piece by piece. But if for some reason you can't make it like your mother or, or you can't make it like that chef on TV, this is what Mary says and where she ultimately puts her trust. She gave a can't, but she was resting on God's can. I hope and pray that we see the difference between Mary and Zacharias and we fall in where God wants us to be. He doesn't want us to know how. He just wanted to believe he's the who. We may not even know when, but as long as we know who is going to make what he has said happen come to pass.